Do you like amateur radio and fixing dumb laws that have existed on the books since the 80s? Well, so does this individual. This is Representative Debbie Lesko from Arizona. And Debbie has been on the pursuit of fixing a dumb rule in amateur radio that was proposed by the FCC back in the 80s regarding symbol rate. And that's basically the amount of data that we can transmit over amateur radio. Now, what makes this interesting is the ARRL, Debbie Lesko, and pretty much hams all around the world agree that going from a symbol rate to a bandwidth-based rate, but here in the U.S., and yeah, pretty much only the U.S., we are limited by character rate. Let's go back in time a bit and talk about how we got here before we watch this really interesting video of Debbie Lesko, Representative Debbie Lesko, talking to members of the FCC, including the chairwoman of the FCC. So as of right now, Debbie Lesko has a bill open to replace symbol rate limits with bandwidth rate limits. And you can see that is in 2023. But if we go back a year or so, at the end of 2022, Debbie also made another petition to change the symbol rate. And this is on the heels of 2019, the ARRL requesting that the symbol rate get looked at. Now, what does this all stem from? Well, it's actually a, a really kind of interesting story. If you go back to 2014, which I believe that was, yeah, 2013, actually, David Sumner, K1ZZ, was the chief executive officer, so CEO of the ARRL, and, and he put out this article that talks about it. And what it's saying is that, basically, our rules, as, as defined in Section 97.307 of the FCC rules, says that and operating be below 28 megahertz, we should not exceed a symbol rate of 300 baud. And on 10 meters, which is 28 to 28.3 megahertz, should not exceed 1200 baud. In a digital system, and this is a quote here, in a digital system, the symbol rate is the number of times per second that a change of state occurs. It should not be confused with the data rate, also called the bit rate, although in a binary system, the values will be the same. So we live in a world where now we don't need a symbol rate so much as we need just bandwidth restrictions. As long as we stay within our little sandbox or our swim lane, we can use that bandwidth to whatever capability we want. However, back in the 80s, when all this was being talked about, there was much discussion on what should drive data rate and data speed. And it was largely based off of the work that was done in March 17th, 1980, when amateurs in the, in the U.S. were authorized to use ASCII. So ASCII is what communication over telephone lines and a lot of those other common use cases were back in the day, right? Well, we've moved on since that, obviously, right? Now we have broadband communication. Uh, we have multiple different ways of doing more than just this baud rate particulars. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, this is a clear-cut case of the FCC not you know, wanting to listen to the ARRL or the many hams or just people in industry or really just look around and read the international room of amateurs and say, oh, yeah, we should, you know, we should take a look at this. Like them putting their head in the sand like an ostrich would. Oh, no, <laughs> it's not that at all. See, back in 2016, the commission, the FCC, actually acknowledged that, yeah, uh, we are hampering the experimentation vital to amateur radio by keeping the symbol rate limit in place. But the commission questioned whether any bandwidth limit was needed in its place. So interestingly enough, the FCC has said, yeah, no, we, we also agree that the symbol rate should be removed and likely replaced by a bandwidth limit. Their questions largely led to, well, how wide uh, should that bandwidth limit be? And it turns out that the ARRL and Representative Lesko, among many hams, kind of all are saying the same thing it should be about 2.8 kilohertz it should be about that wide that's more than enough to really make better use of that space so from a uh, ham's point of view we think we're good to go let's let's go ahead and get rid of the symbol rate and replace it with a bandwidth limit and the fcc even points out yeah no you're right this is kind of a bad thing. Well, how does this all come up to today? There was a hearing with uh, with the FCC and Representative Lesko was there. So we're going to take a listen to some of her comments, which I think is fantastic. And this isn't really pointing the blame at the FCC, but at the same time, I feel like 
There's nobody behind the wheel, as it were, particularly as it pertains to amateur radio. In 2013, radio amateurs petitioned the FCC to delete an obsolete rule that limits the speed with which they can transmit digital messages. Pretty much what we've been talking about, right? Petition was kind of agreed to by the FCC. Let's see where she goes. Although the commission agreed in 2016, in a 2016 notice, yes. that the obsolete rule should be deleted, and although it also waives the rule when hurricanes or other disasters threaten. Now, uh, Representative Lesko is coming from a, a viewpoint. Her argument standpoint is that of emergency preparedness. The FCC has already identified that, yeah, emergency preparedness, we issue waivers already. They're already issuing waivers to allow us a much wider bandwidth to actually get away from symbol rate and use this uh, bandwidth. Uh, Lesko's point of view, which is as accurate, yeah, the emergency preparedness, ham radio operators who are involved in emergency preparedness do need this type of data. It's really the experimentation and growth of the hobby in terms of what we can do in creating new softwares and different things that we really want to gain access to. But uh, Debbie's point is, Representative Lesko's point is completely valid. And the rule still exists. Yes. Uh, we are the only country in the world that has a data limit of this type. It is absolutely shocking that we are one of the only countries that has a symbol rate limit. I'm sure there are more. I'm sure if you looked at the larger countries, first world countries, we, they're, we're probably a minority in that group. They're all enjoying their bandwidth limits with uh, with bandwidth uh, restrictions of 2.8, maybe even higher. Boy, I want that. As you may know, I have twice introduced a bill that directs the commission to replace the data limit with a bandwidth limit. Right. This would allow radio amateurs to engage in modern data communications and increase efficient use of their spectrum. There's a really important point with this. Representative Lesko's bill is forcing the FCC's hand. If it were to go into effect, the FCC would be compelled to make the changes defined in Representative Lesko's in her bill. I want everybody to understand, and if anybody's watching at the FCC, here's this. Don't know why you would, but if you do, you have all the tools. The ball is in your court. You have all of the responsibility to make this change now. You don't need Representative Lesko to create this bill, wasting taxpayer dollars and even having to consider it. If you would just go off and make the change that you've already agreed should happen back in 2016, this wouldn't be needed. These discussion points wouldn't be needed. While appreciated, would not be needed. Chairwoman She's and there. any other members her. that want to Here answer, when can we expect the commission to act on this matter? Or will it be necessary for me to pass my legislation to get the She's commission laughing. to act on this, what I think is a simple matter? She's laughing because it's, a laugh, it's kind of a laughing matter. It is taxpayer money that we're burning Right. All these, you know, respected representatives and, and people that belong to the FCC, including the council or the, the chairwoman of the FCC, having to answer these kind of questions. It's like, let's just get it done, guys. We all agree. Let's make it happen. Let's hear what she says. Well, I appreciate you giving voice to amateur radio. Thank it's you. It's important for hobbyist use. But as you mentioned, it can be also used in emergencies. And we've seen lots of demonstrations yeah. of people doing just that and help, really helping out. So we had this petition a while ago. And um, it's about amateur radio and how it is a shared use so that we have some restrictions on how amateur radio hobbyists can use it. Some so there are shared use in the sense that there are other users where we're a secondary user to the band. But if we're talking about our frequencies, uh, we're the primary users. And while we share the use amongst ourselves, we already have transmission data bandwidths of 2.8, 3.0 uh, kilohertz, right? in regards to single sideband. So we're not arguing for some massive band space. We're arguing for what is a reasonable amount, 2.8 or so. And we can look at things like FT8, which is a mode of operation that has pretty much taken amateur radio by storm. It's, it's taken over as the most used mode of transmission, of, of data transmission, of any transmission, actually, all contacts, uh, more than any. I think if you add all the other contact modes up together, FT8 is the number one, and it's a, it's a digital mode. And what happens with FT8? Well, it's one frequency space that it exists in. And while it's a relatively small uh, bandwidth, 2.8, right, it's not that much bigger uh, in terms of what kind of data we could push hypothetically. And 
could also hypothetically work, you know, internally self-police to leave that space that we operate in those particular modes into one particular area, I think is totally possible. Some of those involve a symbol rate, some involve a bandwidth restriction. And there's a lot of conflict in our record about how we should update those. I don't think that's true. I know that all the hams agree bandwidth limit. Let's go to it. I don't know that the symbol rate limit is something, some beloved thing that we need to hang on to. I don't know where that's coming from. I'd love to hear what that argument is, but I've not seen it if the FCC is pushing for that. But as you mentioned, we last did a rulemaking on this, and I think it was 2016 or 2017. And I think we should refresh that record so that we can move ahead and maybe get to this issue uh, before you have to introduce some additional legislation. She also laughs. So she also, everybody gets it, right? We're making a bill. A representative is making a bill to force the FCC's hand. It's wasteful. It's wasteful government bureaucracy at this point. They already agree. 2016. How many years has it been? Let's make it happen, guys. Come on. I, I want to I want to I want to be behind you, FCC. I want to I want to get behind you again and, and have your back in these cases. But we need to get this dumb stuff out of the way. I know whatever it's costing you not to do this is costing a representative and the House and everyone else involved to make you do it. So just, just, come on. Come on, please. Now, there's one more bit to this that we want to make sure we get to. So so let's let's continue back to uh, Representative Lesko. Do you have any uh, estimated timeline on yes. this? Because, yes. as you know, there are hundreds in my district alone of amateur radio operators. And I've gone to some of these emergency uh, training uh, events where they help hospitals. And I, I think they're very vital. I would like to take a moment here and say I'm about to cross 300,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel and I make amateur radio videos. Obviously, I talk about things that are outside of amateur radio. Uh, guess what, guys? The constituency or the group, the demographics of my channel, the people who watch my videos, they're all within voting age. Most of them, the average are 40 and older right at this point just statistically when you look at it. So that is a huge amount of people that likely all vote and almost all of them predominantly are in the U.S. We all want to see this get done. We really do want to see a bandwidth limit go into effect. Get rid of that symbol rate. Get rid of it. We don't need it anymore. And this seems from what they described to me to be a simple and logical change. And I was wondering what your estimated timeline is on that. Here we go. Well, the thing is that the record that we have on it is stale and the old record, there was a lot of divide like about exactly what changes should be made. No, we know what it is. The, the, the ARRL knows what it is. We all know what it is. Get rid of the symbol rate. 2.8 kilohertz bandwidth. By the way, um, if anybody understands that better and wants to leave an argument or what that argument is in the comments, I'd love to hear it because I don't understand what they're hanging on to. I don't get it. So somebody hit me up. There's no reason we can't do both, by the way, right? There's no reason you can't have symbol rate. You can continue to do baud rate, but but it just needs to be within 2.8. Come on. No problem. That's already easy enough to do with carriers who are using uh, the bandwidth or modulation. restrictions here. So I think we're going to have to update that and then get back to you. Um, I wish I could give you an estimate without updating of, of it. Of course, she's right not prepared to answer that question. That I understand. And do any of the other commissioners have a I comment on if we should do this? I love this question because she... <laughs> so... Uh, coming from a world where I talk to people that are in pretty powerful positions and we're sometimes in these meetings and you'll often get some of these pretty powerful people that is literally hearing a presentation from somebody that is like the uh, the authority in the room on the technical side, like somebody in the company that work for, etc. And if the, uh, the 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 person that is being pitched this to usually high power people when they ask anybody else in the room want to add some thoughts that's like basically saying does anybody in the room want to put their foot in their mouth we've already put forward this person that's going to talk on our behalf the cow the chairperson chairwoman in this case of the fcc but somebody does come forward and it's actually a really interesting a uh, little point here so let's listen uh, uh, yes, uh, Congresswoman. Um, I, I had a number of friends in the uh, amateur relay uh, uh, radio relay league who, uh, who sent me copies of uh, your of your this introduced is, legislation with uh, very important, you know, big smiley faces on them and such. It's uh, you know I, I think this is a very been very well received by the community. Hey, turn off your phone in the back. The, um, obviously, the whole concept of a bowed rate is a, is a little bit outdated. I don't want to be precipitated on how best to reflect the, on how best to update the record. I think the chairman is proposing the right approach, but this is certainly something we should take seriously. It's hard for me to read the name there, so I don't know. But this is a really important point, and and let me explain why. First thing he mentioned, the ARRL someone from the ARRL reached out to me, told me about Representative Lesko's bill. 
that we're doing it again. We're coming after you again with some smiley faces. You know, I'm assuming smiley faces because they all understand this is kind of a joke. How is this still happening? So here's the thing I want to mention. ARRL is taking some black eyes recently. Here is the lobbying of the ARRL in effect right now. It's not that they have boots on the ground. Which hypothetically, it's boots in an email or boots on a text message. But what it is, is it's a boot. <laughs> it's the human attached to the boot that this person that works for the FCC remembers. That's effective lobbying. I've been the first person that have, has come after the ARRL saying, we really, I need them to protect the bands a little bit harder. I need them to do a little bit more. If that individual, which again, I apologize, I don't know his name. If that individual remembers the person from the ARRL being a representative of the ARRL saying, hey, we're coming back at you again, and they both had a little rat-a-tat-tat or repartee or whatever it is, a discussion on it, that is somewhat of an effective lobbying, in particular because they know that we're out there. They know that we care. They know that I care in the fact that I'm making this video, but they have a some kind of a first name relationship or a, or a name based relationship where the individuals know each other. Incredibly valuable. So there is my uh, walking back a little bit of what I've said about the ARRL. Good job. Good job. Well, if, if, if you did what is um, complimentary to my legislation, you would have thousands of people that would be very happy. Hypothetically. 300,000, at least on my account, but not to mention all the other YouTubers' accounts and all the other uh, 700,000 licensed amateurs that are in the United States. Let's go, guys. Come on. Let's do it. And with that, I yield back. Right on. Yes, thank you. Debbie, let's go. What a great... Uh, I love finding that. I actually... That was randomly just in my you know, watch this next related videos thing. And I saw that and I, I re remember, Debbie, because I've covered this story. I've covered it when we were talking about the bill of uh, 2022, and then I knew about the request from the ARRL to, pe to petition. I knew about the response back in 2016. This is something I've been following for a really long time because I, you all know, I really do care about digital modes. So I want to say first and foremost, thank you, Representative Lesko, for, for continuing to bring this up and, and for continuing to show interest in amateur radio. It sounds like you've been to some club meetings or not just club meetings, but events, probably field day. You've seen some of the effect or some of the capabilities in emergency response, which is wonderful. But I want you to think about RF in the, in the classroom, STEM, all the areas where this experimentation, this removal of the symbol rate would be really beneficial for moving data, maybe between space stations, maybe between Mars in the future. There are so many areas of interest where we really need to uh, get rid of some of this, these old vestiges of how we used to do things to allow for the experimentation, which will turn into the businesses and the technology advancements that happen in the future. How do you do that? Well, a lot of people experimenting on amateur radio is a really good way to make that happen. Uh, I will give shout outs to the FCC that they're kind of laughing about this and it's, you know, they know they got to do something. I big shout out to the ARRL for being known with these people. Obviously, that's what we want you to do. And I could read between the lines and see that was going on. So I really do appreciate it. And to my now almost 300,000 subscribers, I thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And if you uh, have not subscribed and you're seeing this video for the first time, I'd love it if you did subscribe. Click that bell so you get notified when I go live, which is every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every other Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, as I'm now running Ham Nation. So, yeah, thank you so much. Plus, I put out a couple of videos a week just like this one. And really, if you want to stay involved in amateur radio, there's no better place than YouTube with all my other fun friends that are out there as well. So I highly encourage you to check them out. I'm hoping for the best here. I really am. But uh, I really need the FCC to just go ahead and start doing the work. Let's do it. You don't need the law to go. Don't don't make the bill go through. Just just get it done. Thanks, everybody, for watching. 73.